Welcome everyone to Southwestern University and we are now beginning our season of grace and gratitude. We have a wonderful program for you this evening and I am very, very glad that you could join us. We will have readings, we will have music, and we will have joy and we invite you all to be part of our loving community this evening. I'm Laura Scandera Trombley, Southwestern's 16th president and I am so grateful for everything that I have experienced since I've become part of this wonderful community. And I want to express gratitude to all of you who have remained close to this marvelous university over the years and who remain in touch with our incredible faculty, our promising students, and look forward to a shared future together. Thank you. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you. Beloved in Christ, as we await the great festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves so that we may hear and respond to this season's invitation. Let us hear in lessons from Holy Scripture the invitation to burn bright the candle of faith, beckoning us once again to open our hearts and minds beyond control and certitude so we may lean into the holy mystery and sacred moments found in our daily lives. Let us hear the invitation to burn bright the candle of hope. So great anticipation of promised healing and restoration will embolden us as we enter into seasons and places of despair within our lives and our world. Let us hear the invitation to burn bright the candle of peace, heeding the invitation of mindfulness, compassion, and justice in places of violence within our own hearts and in the world around us. Let us hear the invitation to burn bright the candle of joy, a candle that is lit with a glimpse of God's love for each and every one of us, a love that loved each and every one of us long before we were created, a love that will be there long after everything has disappeared, a love that fills us with goodness, with laughter, 
and with joy. As we prepare our hearts and minds for a service of lessons and carols, we lift up these prayers and praises humbly to God. And now pray together with the words that Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. and I am from the class of 1979, and I'm a retired elder in the Baltimore Washington Conference. In the first lesson, the story begins with the opening verses from the book of Genesis and the Gospel of John. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the Word was God. The same was in at the beginning with God. In the beginning was the same was in at the beginning with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning was the same was in at the beginning with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word was in at the beginning with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning was the same. Sam Smith, Southwestern Class of 1985. I'm the rector here at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. The second lesson, wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, verses 1, 13, and 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord.
I'm Reverend Andy Smith, class of 79. I'm a member of the Rio Texas Conference of the United Methodist Church, and I'm appointed as a district superintendent. The third lesson, unto us a child is born. Isaiah chapter nine, verses two, six, and seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, upon them light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there will be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. My name is Billy Eccles Richter. I have the joy of being the lead pastor at Grace Avenue United Methodist Church in Frisco, Texas. I'm a Southwestern graduate from the class of 1980. Here now the fourth lesson as it comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, the 26th through the 38th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
And the angel came to Mary and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child that will be born will be called holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said to the angel, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. I'm Laura Merrill, class of 1985. I serve as the assistant to the bishop for the Rio Texas Conference of the United Methodist Church in San Antonio. The fifth lesson, Emmanuel, God with us, 
Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. Southwestern University class of 1973. I'm a minister at the First Presbyterian Church of Giddings. Our lesson for the sixth lesson, as shepherds receive the good news, is found in the second chapter of Luke, verses 8 to 20. Listen again for the word of God. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favored. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary 
and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. seventh lesson is from Matthew chapter 2. The Magi visit baby Jesus. And there, ahead of the Magi, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, 
frankincense, and myrrh. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you always. Amen.